Okay, I think um, we are live on Facebook. Hopefully um, people uh, can hear me, can see me. We've had a few technical uh, difficulties um, tonight trying to log in to Facebook, um, but we've passed those now and we've got around them and it's great to be with you. My name's Simon Turpin. I'm the executive uh, director of Answers in Genesis UK and we're continuing to do some of our meetings while um, we're in lockdown. And tonight we've got a really special meeting for you. It's part three of a series um, we've been doing called The Uniqueness of Humans. And I have with me a very special guest, Dr. Nagi Iskander. Uh, Nagi is a retired surgeon who um, is based in Scotland and he's been ministering um, on creation apologetics for many years now. He is um, part of the Royal College of Surgeons, so he's very well qualified to speak on this subject. And we're just gonna give people um, a few minutes, maybe a minute more to um, log in, start watching, and so people can see what's going on. And it's just important to remember that um, if you, if you want to know more about the ministry, go to answersingenesis.org um, and, and look at the website. And if you go to our store, you will see that we have a 20% discount on all our products at the moment. So please do take full advantage of that. If you go to our, our web store and you look at the products, if you just type in the code when you go to the cart at the end, Matthew 6, you'll have 20% off all your products. And so, We've already got a number of people watching Nagi, so I'm going to hand over to Dr. Uh, Nagi Iskander, and he's going to pre present part three of his series on the uniqueness of humans. If you want to watch the other two parts, you can look on our Facebook page, uh, the video section, or go to our YouTube channel and you'll find parts one and two. So Nagi, um, please um, bless us tonight. Right. Thank you, Simon. Uh, it's lovely to be here and to have this opportunity to share this very important topic, the uniqueness of humans. And the question we're trying to address uh, is how did we come about? It, it, did we come through a series of development from um, ape-like structure with a common ancestor and one branch became humans and the other branch became the apes? Or have we been created on the image of God? And we studied the skeleton of the apes who, were, who walk on four compared to the humans who stand in two and walk straight. And we found that there are anatomical differences that is massive and it cannot happen by chance and time and laws of nature. In this episode, we will concentrate on the intermediates. If we really developed from an ape-like structure, we should have intermediates between the stages of development over millions of years, according to the evolution theory. And uh, today we are going to talk about the intermediates. And uh, the most famous one is uh, Australopithecus afarensis, which is called Lucy. And uh, I'd like really to show the clip from Sir um, David Attenborough, who is um, uh, answering the same question, who do you think you are? And he will come to conclusion, which is completely different from our biblical uh, point of view that we were created on image of God. He will say we are part of these primates, one family, which started with a common ancestor millions of years ago. So let us watch this clip very quickly, and then we will progress our study. So Sir David Attenborough. I'm going to take you on a journey journey to discover who you really are and where you came from. But you're not just going to sit there listening to me. You're going to be part of the experience and you'll be able to examine some of the evidence for evolution along the way. If you have a look at your screens now, you can rotate the modern human skull and you'll see the domed forehead, the small face, the small front teeth and on the lower jaw, a chin. If you keep looking through your screen, you will see Australopithecus afarensis, an extinct hominid who lived about three million years ago. 
Yeah, I'd like you to concentrate on the how uh, Sir David Attenborough presented Australopithecus afarensis as a walking any uh, a walking creature with hands like an ape locking down and standing straight with a pelvis like a pelvis of humans and knee like a knee of humans and allowing it to walk. Obviously, this is not uh, a, a specimen which is found in the ground. It is not uh, uh, something which we have a digital camera and show are walking. This is all uh, made in, 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 in pictures to, to give the impression that Australopithecus afrensis is a walking creature. But when we examine the skeleton that was found, it was only 40% of the skeleton, we will discover that it cannot stand straight and it cannot walk in two because they didn't found the, the, the foot at all as, as a part of, of uh, the, the skeleton in the ground uh, as a fossil. So this is just, I want to highlight what he wants to impress on us by making Australopithecus afrensis walking uh, on the screen. Let us continue the film. The Angus live at a depth in the ocean below a thousand meters where there's no light, so they're living in total darkness. It was our fishy ancestors that first developed some of our most fundamental features, our skeleton, jaws, and four limbs. Hold up your screen and look through it one last time. You'll see the tree that represents all of life, past and present. We started this film with a question, who do you think you are? And we can end it with an answer. You are undoubtedly like every other living thing on earth, a member of one single family of life, descended from a common ancestor living thousands of millions of years ago. So the conclusion of uh, Sir David Attenborough about the question, who do you think you really are, is you are part of a family started by a single cell coming from, we don't know from where really, but it is millions and millions of years ago and developed into different animals and different primates. And then we came to the humans as part of this tree. If that is true, we should have lots of intermediates. And I would like to explain this very famous drawing, which is really widespread in all, uh, in all um, textbooks, biology textbooks, and in the museums, and uh, even on t-shirts and things like that. There is a, a history behind this drawing. This is a drawing. There is no... Um, fossil evidence of each one of these stages that's mentioned or, or drawn in here in this, uh, in this drawing. Uh, it is drawn by Rodolf, uh, Rodolf um, Zollinger in 1965 and in the Life Nature Library. And uh, it explains, according to him, 25 million years of development. And in one side, you find an ape or a monkey and then a different development, some of them walking in four and then they become straight. The head size is changing because the head size in, in apes is about 400 cc, the humans about one, uh, 1200 to 1400 cc. So you see the size of the head is different. You see the hands are different. You see the feet and the walking and straight. And he developed about 15 stages to come to the modern man. Uh, Actually, the article itself, the, uh, the Marshall Progress, was opposite to this drawing because they don't think that, uh, according to the evolutionists, we didn't develop by step by step development, which is very smooth like this. They believe we came as a sort of a tree, and it wasn't as a smooth development as, as we see in this uh, photo or, or this drawing. And uh, there are more problems with the drawing, actually, because, as I said, there is no uh, fossil uh, confirmation of all of that. And uh, the other problem is it is the male line only. Where is the female line? Because you need a female line to come and appear at the same time. So the generation will come one after the other. So even the people, the people who believe in evolution, they don't find this 
is an accurate representation on what they believe in. And uh, the famous uh, biologist, Stephen Jay Gould, who is a, an, uh, an evolutionist, he said, life is not predictable ladder of progress uh, smoothly from one generation to another. So this picture is scientifically not uh, uh, matching the article itself that was written in 1965. Let me just take you to uh, um, Brendan Wood, who's a professor of human um, origins uh, in George Washington University. And he said these words. He said the popular image of a human evolution that the one we saw that was uh, uh, Rodolf Zollinger uh, drew, drew. On the left, you find the picture of an ape. On the right, you find a picture of a human. And in between, you find grades like this. And he said, this image is an illusion. It's not true. It is imagination. It is an artistic representation, but it doesn't represent reality on the ground, on the fossils. Because as I said, the evolutionists believe that we uh, the, the human developed from one single ancestor, and then they branch it in different lines, as you can see here. And some of them are this dotted line. There is no evidence of that but it is imaginary that this skull moved to the other one and it goes on, on, on to come to the homo sapiens, that is the human race who we are. In actual fact, the lack of intermediates between these stages is a major, major problem. And Darwin himself realized that. And he said in the origin of his speeches in 1959, Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain. He discovered that the, uh, uh, the geology does not confirm that there are intermediates between one stage and the other. Perhaps is the most obvious and gravest objection which can be urged against my theory. That's Darwin saying. And he said an explanation. The explanation lies, as I believe, as according to his belief, in the extreme imperfection of geological record. He said, there will be more discovering in geology from 1859, and we will find this intermediate. So let us move on to the modern life here, more than a century from that statement in uh, 1981, um, uh, Stephen Stanley, who's the new evolutionist timetable book, he said these words, in fact, the fossil record does not convincingly document a single transition from one species to another. So there is no single uh, clear um, uh, intermediate between the, uh, the creatures to come to the humans. So the evolutions depend on two pillars, the natural selection and mutation. And mutation is a copying mistake, so it cannot progress us further. A natural selection. Let us see what Richard Dawkins says about natural selection. He said, natural selection is blind because it does not see ahead. And he said, it cannot plan consequences. And he said, there is no purpose in view. So natural selection cannot move an ape-like creature into human because it has no design. It has no, it cannot see ahead. It doesn't see the consequences of taking steps to change something in the joint, for example. And it has no purpose in view. And then Richard Dawkins concludes, yet the living results of natural selection overwhelmingly impress us with the illusion of, of design and planning. So I find these two contradictory um, uh, statements, really. One saying the natural selection, which is the main force that moves one creature to another, it's blind, which cannot see ahead. It is. It doesn't plan consequences, and it has no purpose. So let us come to Lucy, which is our main topic today. It is called Australopithecus afarensis, meaning meaning the southern apes. And uh, Lucy was discovered by um, Donald Johansson in Ethiopia in 1974. And instead of calling Australopithecus afarensis, they called the heart Lucy. And it is dated to about 3 million years ago. And look at the range. It is between 2 million and, um, and two, uh, um, between 2 million and 2, 
280,000. Uh, so there is a difference be between the two estimates with about 80,000 years. So the range here is not is, is giving us the impression these figures when we see three millions is not an accurate figure like when you go and get your blood analysis to see how much hemoglobin you have, you have 15 grams, milligrams of, or, uh, grams of hemoglobin per deciliter. It's not like that. These are estimates with a big range in between. So uh, uh, Donald Johansson discovered it, as I said, in 1974. And it's, it's, it, he discovered actually about 40% it was lacking the foot, there was no foot. So it, without a, a foot, as we discovered in the previous episodes, it's very difficult to understand the standing position and the walking. And the hand bones really were a couple of digits which were curved like, like an ape. Part of the skull, not a full skull, and part of the jaw and the knee joint has a high carrying angle. So this is really what was discovered about 40% of the bones of Lucy as a sort of fossils. So let us listen to this video. And before we start, I'd like you to see the picture here. It is an ape-like structure, a uh, uh, head, but I'd like you to look at the eyes. The, the, the sclera here, the, the white of the eye is characteristics of the human eye, but the apes don't have the white at all. So they try the artistic impression that is given to us through the media is a picture of a mixture of an eye like an eye of humans and a nose like a nose of an ape because the nose of an ape actually is depressed. They don't have this ridge. And Professor um, uh, uh, Minton, David Minton in Answers in Genesis usually explained that saying that the apes cannot wear glasses because they don't have this ridge in the middle, right? So in the picture here, you find the ridge is depressed and you find the eyes, eyes of human, and you find the rest is giving the impression of an ape. So this is an artistic presentation. There is no fossil of an eye. So they, this is an imagination. It is not based on science. And by the way, uh, Richard Dawkins in the picture that I showed you earlier, of the uh, uh, march of progress. In the bottom it is written, show them the facts, tell them the evidence and let them decide. And I agree about all of that actually. We need to check the facts, we need to show the evidence and then we make a decision. The apostle Paul mentioned that in a wonderful way, examine everything and hold into the truth. So we'd like to examine all the evidence before us to see if Lucy really is an intermediate or not. So let us listen to this. A female that weighed 55 pounds and stood three and a half feet tall, not anywhere close to a human. But after gluing these hundreds of bone pieces into 47 parts and creating models of what they think the creature looked like, evolutionists came up with some surprisingly human-like creatures. Wow, how do you go from this to this to these? Have you seen the progress? These are the fossils, the small little pieces and they glued it together and as I said, they got 40%, but they came up with this picture of, 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 uh, of creatures as an intermediate between apes and human. They didn't find the hand, but they drew a hand. They didn't find the feet, but they made the feet clear as a feet of humans. And that is imagination. It is not the true evidence. We, yes, we'd like to see the evidence, to see the facts, see the evidence and make up their, our mind and these are the facts. They didn't find the feet or the hand. So let us continue. And they didn't even find any hands or feet with Lucy, and they certainly didn't find any eye whites, a feature that only humans have and not ape. Yeah, this is the one I was talking about earlier on. In humans, we have a white here that's called the sclera, and this is the cornea, and in the iris, which gives the color of the eye, and that's the pupil. So the apes don't have this white of the eye, can you see the difference here? It's very clear. But in the, in, the, in the media and in museums, and unfortunately in some of the scientific books, they mix these pictures to give us the impression that there is an intermediate with an eye like human 
and the rest of the body like an ape. I wonder if they did this to make her look more human-like. In school textbooks across the country, Lucy is represented as a clear ape to human transition, walking upright, holding babies, and gazing intelligently as she walks. But is this really true? Is Lucy really our early human ancestor? Well, let's take a look at the evidence from head to toe. Starting with Lucy's skull, we really don't have much to go on. As leading paleontologist Dr. Leakey said, Lucy's skull was so incomplete that most of it was imagination made of plant. So what is found is these dark brown uh, pieces of the skull. These are real fossils, the dark ones, the dark brown ones. But the rest is imagination. The rest is um, made of plaster. The rest is made of imagination of people wanting her to be the intermediate. So let us continue. Dr. Paris, thus making it impossible to draw any firm conclusion about what species she belonged to. When Lucy's actual skull bones are put together and the empty parts are filled in with what they imagine her skull looked like, she looks surprisingly similar to a modern bonobo. While we only have a few broken skull bones from Lucy, other skulls of Lucy's kind show that their spines entered into their skulls at an angle, just about like chimps, showing that she likely walked on all fours and not on two legs like humans. Yeah, I'd like you to take you back again to this um, frame. You see, that is the spine. We discussed that in the previous two episodes. So the spine of the um, ape goes into um, a, a, an angle like this because they are walking in four and they want the head to be looking forward. But the skull of the humans, you see the connection of the spine is coming vertical. What are the mutations that can happen to change that angle of the spine from being angulated like this to become vertical like this? This is a big change because there is something at the bottom of the skull called foramen magnum through which the spinal cord comes down into the spine. So the structure here, you cannot just keep moving it and it move and changes. You need to change that in the code, in the DNA. And for that to happen, you need a creator, a designer to design, to put the code, to put the, uh, uh, the, the coding system that allows these changes to happen. So I'd like you to see this uh, bit again very quickly. Um, showing that she likely walked on all fours and not on two legs like humans. Next, we have the inner ears. Dr. Spohr, professor of evolutionary anthropology, has extensively studied the inner ears of various apes and humans. After studying Australopithecines, he revealed that the balancing system in their ears were the same as modern apes, enabling them to live in trees. Next, we have this vertebrae that was believed to be part of Lucy for over 40 years. Recently, scientists learned that it was actually from an extinct relative of the baboon. When Johansson first discovered Lucy's pelvis, he reported it was badly crushed with distortion and cracking. His team believed that it had been broken apart and then fused together during later fossilization, which caused it to be in an anatomically impossible position and to flare out like a chimp's pelvis. Their solution to this? Use a buzzsaw to cut it apart and piece it back together. After this pelvis reconstruction, they noted it was a tricky job, but after taking out the kink of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. Even evolutionists in the famous Human Evolution Journal have problems with this reconstruction, stating, We think that the reconstruction overestimates the width of this pelvis area, creating a very human-like sacral plane. Have you seen the problems with what they found? They found part of the pelvis and they wanted to recon reconstitute that again, to build it again. And they found that the angles does not fit that it will be standing on two. So they made a plaster copy of the specimen and they went into their laboratory and with the side buzzer, they changed the angles to fit in like a human pelvis. We studied the pelvis in detail in the previous episodes and the hip and the knee. And you see, even the evolutions, they say, they say this, we think that the reconstruction overestimates the width of the pelvis area, creating a very human-like sacral plane. So there is a major problem with Lucy that um, uh, Sir Attenborough considered it as the intermediate. And when he showed it on the iPad walking, he, he thought that this is a proof that this is our uh, intermediate ancestor that lived three million years ago. That's why we would like to present the evidence, 
present the facts and let us decide. We agree about this principle. And when we present the facts, we discover they don't fit the idea of Lucy being an intermediate. So what is Lucy then? 400 australopithecine specimens and marches an army of hundreds of complete skeletons across the screen. But what he doesn't say is that he's talking about 400 bone specimens, not individuals. And 35% of these specimens are just teeth and fewer than a dozen are skulls, all of which have been pieced together using numerous broken pieces. Here is a picture showing the majority of this entire collection sitting on top of a single table. If human evolution really happened over millions of years, wouldn't we expect to find more? With over 7 billion humans alive today, shouldn't the ground be filled with transitions of apes still evolving into humans? Even Darwin realized that this was a problem by stating, as by my theory, innumerable transitional forms must have existed. Why do we not find them embedded in countless numbers in the crust of the earth? Yeah, if evolution idea is true, and we think that happened over millions of years, and we are over 7 billion humans living on earth now, there must be loads and loads and loads of intermediates but the fossil record does not show these intermediates. And the most famous and most uh, prominent one is Australopithecus afrensis and this Lucy that we are discussing now. And as we, we discussed together, it doesn't fit as an intermediate between apes and humans at all. The pelvis doesn't fit. They didn't find the foot. They didn't find the hand. They didn't find the full skull. The angle of the spine entering into the skull is different from the angle of the spine entering in our skulls as humans. So when you discuss the facts and discuss the evidence, you come to conclusion, this is not really an intermediate. So just what was Lucy? The answer is straightforward. Lucy and other Australopithecines are extinct apes, just like many other ape species that have gone extinct. She walked on all fours, ate the foods that apes eat, and lived among other animals that are similar to those that live around apes today. Humans are vastly different than apes in so many ways, many of which were made plain in this video. Our brains, however, stand out as the biggest distinction, being nearly three times larger than they should be based on our lineup with similarly sized apes. Our brains are also wired completely differently than apes in so many ways. Humans were wired by God with the intellect to rule the earth, just as we were commanded. We sing, worship, have ceremonies, pray, educate ourselves, and do so many other things that reflect the fact that we are spiritual beings and not animals. Following the genealogies in Genesis leads us back to the spontaneous creation of Adam on the sixth day of creation, just about 6,000 years ago. Then, about 4,400 years ago, the world was destroyed by a flood. 100 years later, humans were scattered around the world from the Tower of Babel. That's why we have so many different people groups today. We were just one race of people, but with minor variations based on the genes each group took from Babel and adaptations that have occurred since. Just like the Bible says in Acts, and he has made all nations of men of one blood to dwell on all face of the earth, ordaining four appointed seasons and boundaries of their dwelling. So the conclusion that uh, Sir Attenborough arrived at, who do you think are you are? And then he came, you are definitely part of these big human uh, or big cre um, creatures that started with a single cell and then or a common ancestor and then differentiated into different things is really does not fit the facts that we discussed in our little presentation now. So the Bible speaks clearly about special creation of man, Adam and Eve, and this is the head of the human race. And then he speaks clearly about the event of the flood, about 1600 years from creation. And um, from these eight people who were saved in the flood, we have the three sons of Noah and their wives. And from there, all the nations of the earth were, were, the, were, were, were reproduced from after the flood. And from Tower of Babel, groups of people lived in different places with genetic drift and genetic shift making special characteristics of each group. When, was, uh, when I was studying biology years and years ago, they used to teach us that we are different races. We have the Mongolians, we have the Negroes, we have the Caucasians and the rest. But they did mapping of the human genome and they came to conclusion to say, we are all one race. When that appeared, I said, yes, I know that from Genesis chapter one, because it tells us that God created Adam and Eve. 
So really when we discuss the facts and review the evidence, we can make up our, our mind and discover that the biblical view of creation is more logical and more evidence-based compared to the assumed idea of evolution. So this is the pelvis of Lucy, and this is the hands of Lucy, and this is the knuckle walking. Knuckle walking means that in this rest here, it has to be solidified in order to carry the weight. So that's the knuckle walkers. And that's completely different from the rest of humans and the functions of the hand and the fine function of the hand of, of humans, which is an amazing thing in itself. So this is what is found, which is, as I said, about 40%. So there is no complete skull. So you cannot really uh, uh, confirm the, the entrance of the spinal cord to the skull. And the pelvis, as I said, is a pelvis of an ape and the knee is a knee of an ape. But let us see what happens in the museums. Um, this is the London Museum and it shows Lucy like this. And it, look at the hands, it gives the impression it is human hand. It is an upright position, but she was walking in four. Look at the face, it gives the impression of, uh, of ape because you see the, the dip here in the nose area. You see the mouth and the jaw. Obviously there was no hair that discovered. This is an artistic representation. So it is not a fossil because people, when they go to a museum, they think this is the fossil that was found. No, this is the artistic expression of 40% of the bones, right? So the truth, it was knuckle walker really like a gorilla, but it is represented to us differently with a hand which can hold something like this and a straight posture and standing. So that is London Museum. Let us go to St. Louis Zoo. You find the heart standing like this and leg in front of the other, that is a massive balance really. And as if the, she is thinking, and you can see the white of the eye as well, giving the impression this is an eye of a human, but there is no fossil of an eye. This is the artistic representation that is given to us to give us the impression of intermediate. If you go to Chicago, you will find Lucy represented like this, very balanced leg in front of the other and a full human hand and the smallest skull, which gives the impression of, uh, of being an ape and an eye looking upward and with a little bit of white as well. In the BBC uh, program, it is represented like this. As I said, there is no fossils of hair, but they put that hair. There was no, nothing really to give them the impression of the color of the skin. And again, you look at the eyes, they, they make it like an ape eye and the nose is depressed, as I said earlier, and there is a hand holding some leaves and that gives the impression of an intermediate. When we examine the facts and examine the evidence, yes, we make up our mind and that's what we want to do in this program. Let me take you to another intermediate. I'll take you a couple of intermediates which are famous and, and um, we will con conclude our episode here. And in the last episode, in the next one, we were going to talk about what the Bible says and the importance of creation of Adam and Eve. So there was um, a discovery in 1922 uh, in Nebraska, and they said, now we are confident we have the ape man, we have the intermediate. And they drew the intermediate like that you can see on the picture here, and the wife and the, uh, uh, the area that they lived in and the surroundings around them. Do you know what they found as a fossil? A single tooth. From a single tooth, can you build all this picture that we are looking at? This is an artistic view. This is what they want us to see. But what is the fact? They found a single tooth. I like you to imagine if you are a Christian believing in the biblical creation and believing the truth of the word of God and living in 1922, and you have all the media and the books or, um, and, and everything saying we found the intermediate. Then I think the most, uh, uh, the, most of us will say, okay, 
this is the science. I have to live by the science of the day and I will neglect what the Bible says. Wait till 1928. They re-examined this single tooth and they found it is an extinct, extinct species of pig. So it doesn't really belong to humans at all. So in 1928, you have to review the evidence again and say, no, I'll better stick with the word of God. I'll better build my life on the solid foundation. So that is really uh, how it is presented to us, this intermediates in the media, in the Time magazine, which is a respected magazine. They give us this picture of how man began and they give you the eye of a human and the nose of a human and the smallest skull giving the impression that this is an intermediate. You go to the time in 2001 and it gives you the how apes became human. So this is a fact, they are giving this as a fact. And this is in the front page. So in the front page, you have this uh, drawing. It is a drawing, it's not a fossil. It is not an evidence. So they give you the eyes. Again, you see the sclera, the white of the eye, giving the impression of human. You see the depression of the nose bones here, giving the impression of an ape. And they said how apes became human. When you see the article, there is no evidence of that at all. You come to National Geographic. These are great, well-respected publications. You find this, uh, the first pioneer. We've, and they give you the impression of an eye of human, a nose is an intermediate, and the small skull again. Then you come to the Scientific America in uh, August 2003 and give you the small skull here, the eyes like human, the nose like uh, an ape, and give you the impression these are our intermediates. Same, you came the natu natural, uh, natural history uh, paper, and it gives you the eyes of human again, and depression of the nose, and giving you a small skull. So I'm just presenting all of that to show how the media and even the books of science, some of them, and some of the uh, museums trying to uh, indoctrinate us, not to educate us, indoctrinate us with the idea of an intermediate. But when we examine the facts, there is no evidence of that at all. Quickly, I'll mention Piltdown Man. That was in 1912. And the evidence that they found is a piece of a jaw. They found two molar teeth. They found a piece of the skull. And they came with this picture of this man. Can you imagine all the, the, the fossils that they found is a piece of a jaw, part of the jaw here, two molar teeth and a piece of the skull. And you come with this picture. I think that there's a lot of imagination here. And they say this is confidently left about half a million years ago. And they said, no possible doubt that this is the regarded as the link between remote ancestors and the apes. In 1953, they discovered it is a hoax. All of that was untrue. The teeth and the jaw belonging to orangutan was dead about 50 years earlier. The skull, it's a human skull, which uh, for a person who lived about 500 to 700 years ago. And the teeth has been filed down to give the impression they are uh, human and, uh, and uh, they are colored as well. So it was a hoax between some scientists in France and in Belgium and some in Britain. Then uh, Brox, uh, Boxgrove Man, they found, uh, that was in 1994-95, one shin bone and it's clearly human, two teeth, clearly human, primitive stone tools clearly made by humans. And they came up with this, a mixture of human and ape, and they gave it a date of 300,000 to 400,000 years. All the specimen proves it's human, 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 but they came as an intermediate. I don't know how. So this is a picture I would like to finish with. They imagine there is an imaginary common ancestor. So it's imaginary. We don't have a digital photo. We don't have a fossil. 
we don't have anything really to talk about this imaginary uh, ancestor. This common ancestor give us the asteroids, the, uh, the Negroes, the Mongolians and Caucasians. It is all imaginary. There is no fossil evidence of any of that. And as I said, when they uh, map the human genome from different groups of people, they came to the conclusion that we are all one race. So let me summarize what we have done in this episode together. We discussed the intermediates. If there is really evolution from ape to man, there must be many, 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 many intermediates. The fossil record doesn't give us these intermediates. The most famous is Lucy or Australopithecus afarensis, and we discovered this was an ape-like creature. And all the other intermediates, the Nebraska man and built down man and all this, we discussed that there are major problems with them and none of them is proven as an intermediate. So I think from our study in the previous two episodes, talking about the spine and the joints, and from discussing the intermediate, we present the facts, we give the evidence, and we can make up our mind. And I think the right conclusion is, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. That's a more logical and more solid foundation to build our life on. Thank you very much for listening. And I look forward to seeing you again in the last episode of this series to talk about what the Bible says about humans and why the creation of Adam and Eve is important to our Christian faith. Thank you, Nagi. Um, let me just ask you a question. Um, given all the evidence that you've shown us about Lucy and how she couldn't be a, a, tran a transition between ape and human, why do you think evolutionists persist in telling us that she is um, that missing link? Yeah, the problem, Simon, actually is not the science. The problem is that's how they want to see it. Mm -hmm. So they, they refuse to have God in their understanding, in their knowledge. So they suppress the knowledge of God. They exchange the knowledge of God. So they try to imagine the parts that is not found in you, Lucy, and build it as an intermediate. They change the angle of the pelvis to make it an intermediate. So that's the decision of the heart. It is not the science. Yeah. Because when you dissect the science and examine the science, there is no evidence at all that she was standing in two because you don't find the feet. And without a foot, you cannot say this creature was standing or not. But look at the presentation in the museums. It gives you the impression really that this is human. This is intermediate between ape and human. I met very intelligent people, Simon actually, and they show me this uh, martial progression and they think this is a fossil. It is not a fossil, it's a drawing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that's frustrating. That's why we need to explain the truth and ask people to challenge us. Yeah. And so we're happy to answer. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a science issue, it's a spiritual issue. Yes. It is a starting point issue. It's a philosophical issue. They wanted to see in this little bones as if it is the intermediate. Yeah. So I um, just want to say thank you, Nagi, and we look forward to seeing the conclusion part four. And um, we do hope you've been blessed tonight if you've been watching or if you watch this at a later time. Um, clear evidence that we are not evolved ape creatures, but we are clearly created in the image of God. And if you've got children or young people in your church, then you please uh, need to get this message to them because they're indoctrinated day after day with this evolutionary, really propaganda to teach them that they're not unique um, creatures, but they are. When you look at the evidence, as Dr. Eskanda has shown us, we are clearly made in the image of God. So thank you once again, Nagi, and God bless thank to everyone who's been watching. Thank you.